What's going on? Lane Libations, it's another episode. We're at the liquor studio on Brigitte, above Hedonist. Come in, let me show you what they're doing. Here we are inside. As you can see, they've got loads of really cool workspaces. Got all your botanicals that you work with. These really cool desks that move. So you can really kind of come with a load of friends, learn about gin. All follow through. In here is where you learn about what you'll be doing throughout the day. They've actually already got some little pot distills on. Be making the little botanicals that you mix with in the session yourself. Then we've got some orange peel in here. It's getting heated up from this copper pot. It's going through. Then when it cools, it turns into your gin there. Look, I spilled gin on myself. I'm an idiot. <laughs> now we're going to speak to John. He's going to tell us way more about what they do here, how they make the gins, what you can get if you come here and enjoy the workshop. Okay, so Sam, what we do at the liquor studio is we do a brief history of gin, basically going over stuff like William Hogarth's painting, Gin Lane and Beer Street. We go over the flavors of gin, how gin was created, where it comes from. We have the start of it with Geneva. We do a little tasting of that, and then we move on to the tasting of gin. We go through all the botanicals that we go through in the production of gin and our botanicals that we use when we create our own little distillates that we'll talk about a little bit later. We then do a little bit on the cocktail side of gin and where we got from the gin martini, the gin gimlet, those sort of things, and then we get you to make your own. Well, during this time, you've got gin and tonics being fired at you the whole time, so people get well and truly happy. <laughs> and then we do some experiments. There's five different ways in which we taste. The most important one is our aroma or our sense of smell. People would think it would be taste buds, but it's actually not. We do experiment over touch, how your tongue can be uh, affected by different carbonation bubbles, levels of heat, level of different things. Then we go through the taste buds and we figure out whether you're a hyper taster, a non-taster or a taster. We also do something with sound, just to prove that it is true. You can taste things differently with sound. And then we do an experiment with how something looks. So we change the color of a well-known flavor and you have to tell me what it is. 90% of people can't do it because I've changed the color of it. We then direct you into this room where we want you to experiment. So we've done experiments in here, but we love the fact that you can go in and play around now. We give you 30 different distillates and we give you a base gin. The reason we give you a base gin is because most people can't blend very well. So we want people leaving with stuff that's palatable. <laughs> yeah, so we let people play around with a base that we've already built. So that you get 300 mil of a base and then you get 200 mil to play around with all the flavors. Like I said, there's 30 flavors, rhubarb, orange, cumin, if you want to go a bit wild and spice. Uh, we're constantly creating new, new flavors, constantly creating different versions and skews. And you basically just are invited to play around, mix the things together. You get a little experiment uh, glass first, mix that up, give it a taste. Your first one's probably going to taste like crap because it's quite difficult to blend. And, or if you want, just neck it <laughs> and we'll start again. <laughs> and then we basically get to where you are comfortable with your gin and then we bottle it name it, get all the wax steel, wax dipping, all that sort of stuff, and then it's boxed and take away. And that's it. So that was a little briefing. You heard John talk about what they do here at the liquor studio. And now they've let me loose on all these botanicals. I'm gonna try some gin. I really wanna try and make a peri-peri style gin. I don't know if it's gonna work. We'll try something a little bit more sensible as well. But this is boxer gin. This is the base gin that they use. I'm gonna try this. Get my palate flowing. Yes, that's gin. Woo. So in Boxer, you've got juniper, coriander, bergamot, sweet lemon. So it's quite a few different flavors in there already. We're gonna mix and match all these beautiful botanicals here. I'm gonna make a banging gin. I wanna try something peri-peri-ish. It's probably not gonna work. So the first botanical I'm gonna use is cumin. It's very, very powerful, this stuff. So I'm really not gonna use that much. Just 10 millis. Bosh, into the mixer it goes. So that is smelling beautifully, really, really cumin -y. You still get a little bit of the juniper because we had the base uh, spirit anyway, which was Boxer's Gin. I'm using this because it's not so peri-peri of the style I want to do, but I still want to maintain that it is a gin, you know? I don't want it to be overly spicy. I don't want it to taste like a curry. We're still going to want to enjoy this in a cocktail or maybe in a gin and tonic. So it's still got to kind of have the right nuances. We're going to go for 20 mils of this. I've got 10 mil of the cumin botanicals, 20 mil of the juniper bot botanicals, and now we're gonna add a little bit more. I'm looking over here because we're gonna switch it up. This is the best thing about being here is because I've got so many things to work with. I'm kind of just freestyling it a little bit. 
Yes. Right, I'm gonna go for hibiscus. The reason I'm going for hibiscus is I want a little kind of sweetener. Those are quite heavy spices. So hibiscus, we're gonna go with 20 ml of this. So that hibiscus has just cut through the spice of the cumin um, and it's just made it a little, a little bit more approachable as a gin. It's not as spicy, it's not going to blow your head off. So I'm going to actually try it. Oh man. That's lovely. That's really, really good. It's actually probably a little bit too much cumin for me. So what the best thing about this place is, do your first take, try it, taste it. With that in mind, I'm going to make another gin now. Again, we've got our 40ml of our base spirit, that is the boxer gin. We're going to start with the cumin, like last time. However, I am gonna add less. So last time I put 20, this time I'm actually gonna go with 10 mils. Now we're gonna add that hibiscus. Last time I did 20 mils. I'm gonna do 20 mils again. So the reason I've switched out juniper and I'm putting the cherry blossom in instead is because boxer gin, the base gin that we're using, is already quite juniper heavy. So I wanna switch it up. I want a slight different nuance from what the first gin was. So we're just gonna do it. I'm gonna go for 20 mils of the cherry blossom. So those are my three botanicals. Now we're gonna decant it and we're gonna try it. I reckon this is gonna be pretty much on the money for what we want. It's not gonna to be too spicy, but it's still gonna have that kind of cumin kick at the back. It does smell quite heavily of cumin as well still. Such a powerful flavor. Mate. This tastes like a nice long walk in a meadow with grass and flowers. That's what I'm trying to go for for this gin, so I'm really glad I've achieved it. <laughs> Not sweeter, just a little bit more floral. It's less spicy, that's what we're going for today. You really get the cherry blossom on the nose, cumin at the end. It bounces around, it's a nice kind of spicy gin. Is that better? Wicked, so third time's a charm. That second one, I was pretty happy with it, but I think we can go a little bit better. We can elevate it a little bit further. So we're gonna stay with the same ingredients, but maybe switch up the blends a little bit. I might throw a little cheeky dash of, el of elderflower in it as well, just cause I can, why not? Right, boom, first things first, cumin. I'm gonna go 10 mils of that. As we were. Second ingredient, what was the second ingredient, Jack? You don't know, do you? It was hibiscus. Thank you, Kirsty. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> right, oh yeah, hibiscus. Because it's gonna cut through the cumin. It's gonna let, make, I don't want it overly, overly spicy. We're gonna make a really nice classic cocktail at the end of this video. I want the gin to be the main star, but I don't want it to kind of spice up my life. I'm gonna go with 20 mils of this. So third ingredient is the cherry blossom. What I really like about this is you get it more on the nose. So it kind of adds another element to the gin. Cherry blossom. We're gonna go with 20 mils again, like the first. And then I'm gonna switch it up slightly on this for all my basic bitches, AKA Joe Winters, the main man. We're gonna put five mil of peach in it. Um, I don't wanna put loads in because I don't want it to overpower. Five mils. So I've got it all mixed in there. We've got, this is the third batch now. It smells amazing. The cumin still comes through a lot, which is great, because I still want that. Smells really good. Kind of smells quite similar to the first one, actually. Um, don't know why, let's try it. Oh, now that, that's good. I'm really happy with that, um, because I've got the balance a lot better. I think the five mil of peach at the end just kind of helped uh, soften the cumin a bit. Wicked, so this is my final gin. We've got the peach, the cherry blossom, the cumin, and the hibiscus. This is my final gin. We've got the peri libations, made by me, Mr. Sam. So we have decanted the bottle. And now to put a final touch, the lovely label. So that's that, label's on, gin's completed. Let's make a cocktail. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a gin martini. My uh, peri libations gin is the star of the show. So vermouth, we're using Nolly Pratt today. So chill the glass. This has already been chilling a little bit. We're gonna put a little bit of ice in. Now the amount you stir a martini is completely down to your preference on how you like your drink. I'm gonna go with 60 mils of my Perry Libations gin. I'm only gonna put five mil of the Nolly Pratt. It's gonna be, well, two bar spoons, let's say. Nice and cold, nice and refreshing. And I'm gonna finish this martini off a beautiful little orange zest, just like that, just for the nose. That is my classic martini with the Perry Libations gin here at the liquor studio. Salut. Oh, hey. 
good. Perfect. And then the final touch on my gin is I get to do a lovely wax bottle. So I hope I don't mess it up. This is the first time doing it. So we go in at, at an angle, let it drip. Look at that. And that's been another episode of Ling Libations, guys. I'd like to thank Kirsty and John for letting us come and film here today. It's been absolutely amazing as I finish off this beautiful turn. Oh, I actually did something well. Look at that, Jackie boy. Fantastic. Another episode of Lay Libations. Thanks for tuning in. Check us out next week. Check us out the week after. Check out all the other videos. Bang the bell. Enjoy your Sunday. See you later.